brought us to here today. You revive our lives. You transform our lives through your word. You encourage us through your word. And at the end of the day, Father Lord, you beautify our lives through your word that people will know that indeed we serve a sovereign and a loving God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way. Breathe upon your word and let it bring life into every situation in our lives in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to bless the name of our God this morning. You know, every first Sunday of the month is a thanksgiving it's a thanksgiving service. It's a time that we reflect. It's a time that we give glory and honor to God for the things that he has done for us. So today I'll be talking on the topic of the benefits of a thankful heart. The benefits that a thankful heart produces. The benefits, I'll talk on six key things. The benefits that a thankful heart produces. Uh, I know that God has done so many things for us. There are so many things that God has done that we need to be thankful for. Even as human beings, when people, we do things for people, we want them to thank us. We want them to, you know, to, to appreciate the, the gift of love, whatever we've done for them. We want, we want to be appreciated. And also even concern us when we are raising our children, we teach our children to say thank you because we know it's a good habit to have. How much more our God, our awesome God that has been doing awesome wonders for us, how much more would we not thank him? How much more would we not thank you? You may say every, every first Sunday is Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, but we can never thank God enough. We can never out thank God. So we are looking at the benefits a thankful heart produces. And I pray that God will bless you and I as we delve into his word today in the name of Jesus. Can we turn our Bibles to John 6, verse 1 to 11? John 6, verse 1 to 11. Hallelujah. John 6, verse 1 to 11. Please, maybe one of the youths can help me to read. John 6, verse 1 to 11. One of the youth can help me. Hallelujah. Mariah, are you there? Please, if you can help me read um, John 6, verse 1 to 11. Oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. John chapter 6, 1 to 11. Okay, I'm just getting it. John chapter 6, verse 11. Verse 1 to 11. Oh, verse 1 to 11. Okay. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. I think that's how it's pronounced. That is the Sea of Tiberias. And great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he had already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barely loaves, barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, he began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come, make him king by force, drew again to a mountain by himself. Amen. I think that's enough. Hallelujah. We can see from here that, you know, there was a situation, you know, there was a great multitude that had come, followed Jesus. And, and there was uh, a need for them to be fed. The scripture says Jesus knew what to do, but the disciples had no clue as to what to do. And what Jesus did was with the food that he had, the little that he had, he blessed that food. He thanked God for that food with the little that he had. 
So you can see from here that Jesus was teaching us and uh, demonstrating to us that even when you don't have enough, if you have a thankful heart, it produces abundance. So the first key thing is with when you have a thankful heart, you have abundance of supplies. There will be an abundance of supplies in your life in the name of Jesus. The scripture made us to understand clearly that Jesus knew what to do, but the disciples, they had no idea because they were talking about the fact that even so much man's wages will not be able to feed these people. But Jesus knew what to do. And what did he know what to do? He knew that he had to give thanks for the little. And he knew his father that he said. He knew that if he gave thanks to God for the little, there will be an abundance of supplies in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Sorry, apologies. <laughs> my, my laptop is going off. Sorry about this. I have to quickly plug it before it goes off. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So we, 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 um, we, from the word of God, we know, we know clearly that Jesus gave us a template, a template that in your lack, in your little, give thanks to God. Because what he did with the five loaves and the two fishes, he produces abundance. There were so many baskets left. And that is the model for you and I. It does not matter if you can only thank God for the little and the things that you don't have. If you can only thank God, if you can only thank God, there will be an abundance you will not lack. In fact, in, you know, in that situation, if, 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 uh, if the disciples have started complaining that how are we going to feed them, they had every right because there's so many people that it was quite impossible to feed them because they didn't have anything. They didn't have anything. But uh, you know what? They chose not to complain. And it's a key thing for us to do. You might say, ah, you, you're going through so much hardship and so much troubles, so much struggles. If you complain, at least you, you have every right to complain. But I want to ask to look at the word of God. What the word of God says, if you can turn, maybe a mate can read this for me. Numbers 14. Numbers 40, we want to see what happened when the children of Israel, when they started complaining, when they started complaining, Numbers 14, verse 1. Numbers 14, verse 1. Maybe Nate, if you are very pleased, if you can help me with this, I really appreciate it. Hallelujah. Numbers 14, verse 1. If you are unable to do so, maybe Alicia can help if Alicia is there. Numbers 14, verse 1. Let's see um, verse 1 to 3, then we'll go further on to 27 to 29. Hallelujah. We just want to see, you know, when, when we are going through so much, when you're going through so much, Numbers, Numbers 14, verse 1 to 3. Is, is Nate able to read for us? Hallelujah. If not, I'll read. I'll read because of time. He says, so all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept that night, verse 2. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, verse 3. Why has the Lord brought us to the land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Why would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Please hold the day. We turn to verse 27 to 29. But the, let me give you a background of the story. Because when um, the Lord had promised them the land of Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey, and number 13, Moses sent out spies to go and spy the land of Canaan. And when they when the spies, 12 spies, when they went, they could see giants. They could see that these, the people were strong. They could see they saw challenges. They knew that mm -mm, there's no way we could defeat these people. So there was trouble. So in actual sense, they have every right to say, to complain. But that is not the template that our Lord gave us. That is not the template. That's what Jesus, clearly, they had a challenge, but he thanked God. He thanked God in the challenge and it brought abundance. Verse 27 Jeanette, if you can help me, 27 to 29, we will see what happened when the people complained. He says, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation? 
who complain against me. Beloved, it is a dangerous thing for a believer to have a complaining heart. You might have every right. You are going through problems. Everyone sees the problems that you are going through. But it is a dangerous place for you and I to be in when we complain against God. He says, I've heard the complaints with the children of Israel make against me. Verse 28. Hallelujah. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. Verse 29. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in the wilderness. All of you who were numbered according to your tie number from 20 years and above. And exactly what they were complaining. They said, if you could, only when you read verse one, if only we could have died, they wanted to die. That's what they were complaining. They said they, it would have been better for them to have died in Egypt than go and face those giants in Canaan. Forgetting that the Lord was the one that had promised them that he was giving them that land, flowing with milk and honey. So they started complaining. There was a situation in the flesh, physically looking around them, you say, oh, yes, they have every right. But that's not the template for you and I as children of God. That is not the template. Jesus taught the disciples. He gave thanks when there was a challenge that these people, they had very little food. They could not feed these people. It would have been an embarrassing situation if these people were not, um, Jesus was not, have been able to feed all the people that followed him. But he gave us an example by giving thanks in very little thing, with very little thing that produced, that produced abundance. So a thankful heart, a thankful heart, the first key thing, if you have a thankful heart, you have abundance of supplies. You will not have any lack. Even with the little that you have, you thank God, you will not have any lack in the name of Jesus. So key number one, point number one, that the benefits a thankful heart produces is abundance of supplies. And I pray that that will be your portion, that will be my portion in the name of Jesus. The second aspect, the second key thing is a thankful heart brings life to dead situations. How do I know this? Let's look at John 11, verse 41. The Alicia, you can read that for us, please. John 11, verse 41. A thankful heart, it brings life into dead situations, into hopeless situations, hopeless cases, cases that we need to write off. A heart that will thank God, a heart that will thank God, it will bring life into that dead situation. Hallelujah. Alicia, please, if you can read that for me. John 14, John 11, 41, we read 41 to 42. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. 11? Yeah, John 11, 41 to 42. Oh. To Jesus, glory be to God. John 11, 41 to 42. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they would believe you sent me. Hallelujah. We all know the story of Lazarus. Lazarus had been dead four days. It was a hopeless situation. When he was sick, they sent for Jesus, but Jesus was not able to come. It was a hopeless situation. When Jesus came, you know, Lazarus was dead. He had died for four days. He had died for four days. And, and Jesus wept because Jesus was sad. He loved them, Lazarus very much. He was sad. He wept. But the templates that Jesus gave you and I, which is an example for you and I, whatever situation that we are confronted with, whatever hopeless case we are confronted with, he gave thanks. He gave thanks when he came to the tomb, when he gave the road, so he gave thanks to God. He thanked God. He knew the God that he said. He knew that God was able, able, able to, to, to turn that dead situation into a lively situation. And as he gave thanks to God, as he gave thanks to God, in that hopeless situation, Lazarus came back to life. 
I don't know that which you are going through. If you would make up your mind that you will thank God, you will thank God even in the place of adversity, even in the place of hopelessness. If you will only thank God, just like Jesus did when Lazarus was dead, he thanked God. And as a result, he said, I thank you because I know you hear me. You always hear me. God has always been hearing me. If God has taken you out of a situation before, what makes you think he cannot take you out of whatever situation that you are comforted with? So if only you can thank God, if only I can thank God, regardless of the situation that confronts us, life will come into a dead situation, that hopeless situation. And I pray that this morning, any dead situation in your life, if you only cultivate the habit of giving God thanks, regardless of that situation you are facing, life will come into that situation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So point number two is, if a thankful heart, the benefit that a thankful heart produces, it brings life, it brings life into hopeless situation. It brings life into death situation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number three, a thankful heart. If a thankful heart glorifies God, a thankful God, and I believe that you and I, we want to glorify God in all that we do. Second Corinthians 4 verse 15. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 15. Hallelujah. A thankful heart always glorifies God. A thankful heart is as our is is worship, is our service to God. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 15. Do you know if you can project that for me? Thank you so much. God bless you. He says, for all things are for your sake, that grace, having spread through the many, many of us will receive grace. Many of us receive grace. God has given us grace. We are abounding in grace. May cause thanksgiving. Because we receive grace, it causes us to give God thanks. It says, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. You know, so as, 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 as we give God thanks, it glorifies God. So that is a very key thing for us to have other understanding that as I, I'm thanking God, I'm glorifying God. As I'm thanking God, I'm glorifying God. And, and, and it's a good thing for us as believers to glorify our heavenly father who's made us, who sustained us and kept us in all through challenges. He's kept us and he's brought us far. He's not finished with us. So it's a good thing for us as believers to give God thanks. And as we do that, he glorifies God. And as we glorify God, what do you think God will do for you and I as we glorify him? He will meet us at the point of our needs. Hallelujah. So as we keep on glorifying God, as we keep on thanking God, we bring glory. We bring glory to our God. And I pray that we continually, we continually thank God in every aspect of our lives that we forever glorify his holy name. Amen. And the fourth thing I want us to look at is 1 Thessalonians 5.18, which is a very popular scripture that we all know. First Thessalonians 5, 18, we say it over and over and over and over again. He says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So as you give God thanks, you know, as you give God thanks, you align yourself in the will of God for your life. As you give God thanks in everything, in everything, as we give God thanks, you know, so as a thankful heart, what does it do? It aligns you, the benefit that you get as you continue to thank God, it aligns you in the will of God for your life. That is the word of God. It says everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We don't want to be outside the will of God. We want to align ourselves in the will of God. So the benefit for you and I, as we continually give God thanks in every area, every situation that we are going through, we align, we position ourselves to be in the will of God. Hallelujah. If we have this understanding that I want to be in the will of God, I want, I want to do the will of God, it will help us to have a thankful heart because we know as we keep thanking God, regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances that we are in, as we keep thanking God, we position ourselves in the will of God, in the will of God. And that is what we want for our life because we don't want to come out of the will of God. If you are out of the will of God, we know that the end will be disastrous for you and I. So it's for us to have this understanding, constant reminding ourselves that as I keep thanking God, I position myself to be in the will of God, to align myself with the will of God for my life. So that is one of the key benefits 
find Psalm 4 that a thankful heart produces. It positions you. It positions you to be in the will of God for your life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And point number five, one thing also that a thankful heart will do for you and I is always makes us to be content. It brings contentment into our lives. It helps us to not to be jealous or envious of anybody. First Thessalonians, first Timothy, first Timothy 6, verse 6 to 8. First Timothy, verse 6 to 8. A thankful heart. Well, if you somebody that keeps thanking God, it makes you content. You will not be looking at what other people have and be jealous and envious and looking at ways and means that you also have those things that they have, whether by genuine means or by uh, or sincere means. First Timothy 6, verse 6 to 8. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Can you share the screen for me, please? Thank you. Hallelujah. First Timothy 6, verse 6. Is, uh, it says, now godliness with contentment is a great gain. It's a great gain for you to have to be content with what you have. He says, I like this scripture so much. It says, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And verse 8 Verse 8 says, and having food and clothing, with these things we shall be content. Hallelujah. Don't you have food to eat? Don't you have clothing to wear? No, we have, we have more than enough to be grateful to God for. God has provided for us so many. We have so many things to, that we need to be grateful to God for. So it talks about the fact that if you are thankful to God, if you're thankful, it makes you content. You are not, you are not like the unbelievers, the heathens, that you, you're searching for things, you, you are jealous. For any achievement of someone, it makes you envious. No, 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 no. It makes you a thankful heart to make you content. You know, you look at yourself, you know where God has brought you from, where you are coming from, and you are content. You know, even though you want to go somewhere, you are content because you know that God will be able to carry you to the next level level of your life. So a thankful heart is a great gain for you and I. When we are thankful to God, it helps us to be content. It helps to be content. We're able to reflect on life and look at the blessings in our life so that we, 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 we are at peace in ourselves because we know, we know that God is the one that has brought us this far. Hallelujah. The final point I want us to look at also is, is a story that we all know so closely concerning the 10 lepers, Luke 17. The 10 lepers that Jesus healed. The 10 lepers that Jesus healed. Luke 17, if we can project 15 to 19 for me. Luke 17, verse 15 to 19. Hallelujah. Luke 17, verse 15 to 19. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We know, we know the story that the 10 lepers, they came to Jesus and Jesus told them to go and show the same to the priest. But one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God. Verse 16, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Verse 18. Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Verse 19. That's where I'm going. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Some version says your faith has made you whole. So a person that will know how to thank God, a person that is thankful will always receive permanent victory. Your victory, it will be permanent. It's not like you have a breakthrough uh, in something and before you realize you are back again in that situation. It brings you permanent victory because this person, this, this leper came back thanking God for the healing. He says, I've made your faith, has made the whole. The faith has this wholeness, completion in your life because you were thankful. Because you were thankful, because I was thankful. So the last benefit of being thankful to God, it makes us have permanent victory. The Bible makes us to understand the blessings of the Lord. It makes us rich. It has no sorrow. So if you are someone that will cultivate the habit of thanking God, regardless of what you are going through, you have permanent victory in the name of Jesus. I want us to leave, I want to leave us with this. Let us be intentional. Let us be intentional that we will give God thanks, regardless of the situation we go through. Let us be intentional. And I like the saying of Habakkuk, Habakkuk 3, verse 17 to 19. 
It's a very, very powerful scripture that, that, that should encourage every believer. If you can give God thanks in everything, be intentional, be intentional, make up your mind that I will thank God in every situation that I go through. I will thank God because he's the one that knows the end from the beginning. We have no clue. We have no clue. We have no idea. We did not create ourselves. We don't know what is ahead of us. It's only God that knows. And because we have God in our lives, we know the end, it shall be well with us. Habakkuk 3, you know, 17 to 19. Habakkuk 3 is very important that we make our mind will be intentional. You get up from your bed, you don't feel like thanking God, but yet still you thank God. There's nothing going on well for you, but yet still you thank God. Hallelujah. Let's be intentional because thankfulness produces results, results that we can only trace it back to the glory of God. It is although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fill, and the fold shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no head in the stalls. Verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Verse 19. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hands feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer of my string instrument. This is someone who has an understanding of the God that he said. He know that whether the things at this present time, there may be nothing in my life to glorify God for. There may be nothing seems to be attractive about my life. But yes, still I will rejoice in this God. Yes, still I'll give God glory to God because he's the one that will make me to walk in high places. And I believe you and I want to walk in high places. So I just encourage someone this morning, be intentional that you will give God thanks. Be intentional, make up your mind. Make up your mind that ah, I might not have pleasant situation around me, but yet still I will thank God. Even in the challenge challenges that I'm going to, I will thank God. I will thank God. I will thank God because at the end of the day, he is the one that has made me. And as I thank God, I'm aligning myself, aligning myself to be in the position of the will of God for my life. And at the end of the day, he's the reward of them that diligently seek him. So as I'm thanking him, even in my situation that is represent hopelessness, I am guaranteed, I know that that situation, there'll be a shift in that situation. I just want to encourage someone this morning. I just want us to be intentional, be intentional that you will thank God. We will not be, you know, like the, the children of Israel, like, you know, when they complain, they, they had seen so many mighty works of God. They, they, they had seen Red Sea being parted right in front of them. Yes, so that was not enough for them. They were still complaining. They were still, because there were some giants they were meant to go and face, they were still complaining and God destroyed them. So I just want to encourage someone, may we not be, believers that complain and murmur. The Lord God so has no pleasure in murmurs and complainers. He says, as long as surely as I live, we read in Numbers, Numbers 14, verse 28, 29, 28 there, it talks about, I will do unto them what I hear them say. Many believers are confessions. You know, you say, I'm dead. I'm this. When you go through challenges, our confessions are not, are not good. You know, the like Bible says in, in Proverbs 28, verse 21, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those that love it, they shall eat its fruit. If you want to live, you confess good things. If you want, if you want things around you to collapse, you confess bad things, negative things. So it's very important we are intentional about thanking God. Let us not be people that murmur and complain. You might have every right because things have gone, uh, things are just going the way you ought, it ought not to go in your life. You may say, I have every right. I, I, I'm only human. But at the end of the day, we are children of the most high God. And Jesus gave us templates. We saw the templates that Jesus gave us, you know, concerning feeding the 5,000, you know, that was the man. And so it was more than 5,000 people. He thanked God, even in a hopeless situation. When Lazarus was dead, he thanked God. That, that situation represented hopelessness. So that's the template for you and I to work with. We will not be people that complain. We will not be people that murmur. When things are not going the way it ought to be, we will give God thanks. And as a result, God sees our hearts. He has a result of that. There will be a transformation in our life. Amen. I want us to pray this morning. We are going to pray that any area that we've been complaining, any area that we've been murmuring against God because we've not seen a change in our situation, may God help us. May God forgive us 
for any time you've complained against him, any time you've murmured, you might have had genuine reasons because we were going through so much. But God's soul has no pleasure in murmurs and complainers. He will do unto them that which he hear them say. So I'm going to let us pray this morning that God will forgive us. Anytime we've complained, anytime we've murmured, anytime we, 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 we've been so bitter, uh, we are angry at God. Yes, there are times that we, we've gone through things. I know myself, uh, so look, look into your own life. That, that, that you, you might be, have been angry at, with God because of things not going the way you wanted it to be. I want us to pray for forgiveness. Let's genuinely repent. Let's just ask God to forgive us anytime I've complained, anytime I've murmured, anytime I've been angry at you because things have not gone the way I wanted it to go. Father, forgive me. In your mercy, Lord God Almighty, forgive me. Forgive me this morning, oh Lord, because your soul has no pleasure in memories and complainers. You destroyed the complainers and memories of God, the children of Israel. You destroyed those who murmured and complained against you, and that is not what I want for my life. That is not what I want for any family members of mine. I pray this morning that you forgive us. You forgive me, oh Lord, anytime I've complained, anytime I've murmured. Daddy, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Over your church, everyone that has complained and murmured, anyone that is even as we, we, we are praying now, is even angry at you, Lord, for, for, for things that have not gone the way they wanted it to be. Father, please forgive them. Forgive them. Anyone that is angry at this very moment, anyone that is bitter against you, Father Lord, Father, please forgive them in the name of Jesus, Father Lord. Forgive us. We are relying on our flesh. Daddy, forgive us. Forgive us, oh Lord, and have mercy on us that we will not complain. We will not be memorous in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. I just want us to pray that, Father, God will help us that will be intentional about our thanksgiving. We'll thank God in all circumstances. We'll thank God. We'll be able to graciously give God thanks in every situation that we go through. We'll be gracious enough. Let's pray that God will give us that grace that we'll be thankful. It's a grace. We need it. We need it. We need it. We need it. Because it's not every time that you get up that you feel like thanking God. Because 